professional competence and confidence is to be put in a real life setting. To this end, we wanted to make sure that the clinic at, at our school was functioning to the best way possible and meeting the needs of all those uh, concerned, both the students as well as maintaining patient safety. This study is the first of, our, of its kind to our knowledge to be done in Europe. However, it's based on previous work uh, done at the University of Victoria by Robertson in 2002. We use the same survey, and throughout the presentation, I will be comparing our results with those from, from this study. As I said before, this was um, conducted at CISO Paris at the outpatient clinic <coughs> on Manu. Uh, to give you a little background on how things work at our school, there are 10 different boxes in which uh, fourth and fifth year students, because there it's a, a five year course, uh, treat patients. All the while, tutors go around between different um, clinics. They can enter at any time. When this happens, students generally give a uh, brief case history before going on to talk about proposed treatment and, uh, and physical examination. There are also third year students who are required to observe a certain number of consultations. So to, on to our survey, for the students and tutors, we handed out 148 copies. Uh, of which 93 were, were returned. These were given to fourth year and fifth year students, as well as tutors. And to get an idea of who we're dealing with, we can see that students are a little, <coughs> more, are, uh, a little more than half female, as we saw this morning in Professor Boothby's presentation. And the, greatest, the greater part are between 18 and 24 years old, so they're just at the beginning of their professional careers, just out of school. The patients, are majority are a majority majority female as well. This time a little under three quarters, and the age range is a little larger this time, so from 26 to 45. We can see that also 63 percent of students were there for a follow-up consultation, and in 82 percent of the consul the consultations there was a third person present, whether it be a, a third year student observing or, or a tutor. Also out of the 62 responses. 35 um, patients had previous experience with an osteopath. So to move on to results, we can see that students are generally, students and tutors are generally quite satisfied with um, the way the clinic is working. Indeed, 99% reported that they thought it was an effective training method. We repair these to the similarly high results from the Robertson study. In the, in the survey, students were able as well to check different skills that they thought they had efficiently learned in, in the clinic. Here they are arranged in decreasing order. So the, the greatest amount of students, 96% or 97%, <coughs> uh, thought that clinic helped them to learn case history taking, whereas the smallest percentage, only 62%, felt this way for, for note taking. This gives us an idea of the strong points of, in the clinic, as well as things that can be improved upon. On to patient satisfaction. How do they feel? Well, they keep coming back, which is a good sign. <laughs> and in general, they they are quite happy. Ninety-four percent. A little disclaimer: There's a lot of <coughs> figures, but I'll try to make them, <coughs> them manageable. Ninety-four percent felt that the pr pricing was appropriate, whereas ninety-eight percent would recommend the clinic to family or friends. Also, of the thirty-five um, patients having consulted elsewhere. 83% thought that there was a better exam and better diagnosis at the school, and a little under three quarters thought that the treatment was better. So here we see that from all, for all, all considered, patients, students, and tutors, clinic is generally quite satisfactory. However, next we move on to more controversial topics, namely the presence of a, of a third person in the consultation. This <coughs> extra presence can often be seen by students as a necessary evil, though it's an, an important part of, of, of ensuring patient safety. And when given the, when asked, does this extra presence bother, stu bother patients? Students were unable to say. 47% said that they weren't sure. Well, it's the next highest percentage, 42% thought that patients did not appreciate this extra presence. The good thing about this study is that we can see what the patients responded. And only 3% reported being anxious, whereas on the whole, 92% were fine with an extra person in the room. We can compare this to the Robertson study where even a higher number, 96%, were at ease. 
In addition, 98% of patients were comfortable during case history taking, and everyone who had it in a questionnaire were com was comfortable during a physical exam. In addition, 74% um, of <coughs> patients said that they felt at liberty to ask questions when there was a third person in the room um, from the tutor exam, or the tutor from the tutor, for example. This is um, this shows us that. Contrary to what students might believe, instead of being just a liability, having someone else present can actually be beneficial in some ways to the patient. The third and final part in the triptych of our results has to do with case history. As I said at the beginning, case history is given in front of the patient. However, when asked on the questionnaire, uh, students said, a little under three quarters said that they thought the best place to do this would be the staff room and only a little under, a little uh, over a quarter thought that it was appropriate to do in front of the patient. The reasons for this are multiple, but it can be broken down into two main uh, groups. To begin with, students are afraid of uh, confusing the patient with medical jargon or worrying them. And second, they're, they're insecure about their own student credibility, about their credibility and about having their relative inexperience be shown. While we can't speak for student credibility, we can see whether or not the patients felt anxious. And for the most part, they did not. Only 2% felt left out, while 3% found the discussion inappropriate. Uh, while the, the large majority, 84%, thought that having case history be presented in front of them would give them the ability to add to the medical knowledge. So here again, we can see contrary to what students may believe, the um, giving case history in, in front of patients can, can be beneficial to them as well. So we can ask the question here presented at the bottom of whether or not it would be interesting to, to have two different areas to give case history, both to have the patient participate while at the same time protecting the student. To, <coughs> to conclude, I'd like to I'd give you the three main things that we have learn from this survey, <coughs> to begin with relatively high satisfaction rates from all, all those involved. Secondly, and surprisingly, the fact that having a third person does not necessarily bother the patient. And finally, the question of where to present case history. This, a study like this is relatively simple and easy and is a, can be an effective way to get an idea of how the clinic is being run. <laughs> For, the, for this reason, it has its place in, in every student teaching clinic, both to maximize efficiency as well to give us a larger group of results with which to compare our data and those from the Robertson results, the Robertson study. So with that in mind, we would encourage a similar study in any and all teaching clinics.